Hi, it's Wendy at the Barrington Library, um, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your salt dough to make your salt dough snake. This is the one that I made last night, and I cooked it, and then I could paint it today. And here's one that I made last night that I couldn't paint yet. I didn't have enough time, but I'm going to. So um, I'm going to turn the camera down and show you what you'll be getting in your kit. All right, for your kit, you'll be getting um, a flat bag with flour in it. It's approximately two-thirds of a cup of flour, um, and then about a, a third of a cup of salt is in here. You get a spoon. You get this one little container that has a good um, teaspoonful of oil, and then you get a few colors of paint to paint your snakes with the next day. So. We're going to go ahead. Um, I had already poured my flour and salt into my bowl. So I'm going to set those aside. Um, I saved a little bit of flour if you can, because that you'll use that on the countertop, but it's okay if you don't. Um, go ahead and pour your oil in it. And then from home, you're going to need about a quarter of a cup of water. Um, this is something that you want to only pour a little bit in at a time. So um, this is a quarter of a cup in here. I'm going to pour most of it, but keep a good puddle of it reserved so that um, if I need more, I can. But I don't want this to be a real wet dough. So I'm going to start stirring it up. Mm, not bad. Whoops. A little on the counter. <laughs> oh, that's getting pretty good. It's got a little bit of dry still stuck in the bottom, so here's where I can just add a few drops. I don't have to put it all in, but I'll put a few drops over here, and maybe over here. Let's see if I can scoop that up. Let's stir it so it gets mixed. Pretty good. Let's go on this side now. Do the same. So the water might be just the right amount. Let's see. There, it's coming together pretty good. It's all holding itself. Now that it's um, clumping pretty good and there's not any flour left in the bottom of the bowl, I'm gonna push it off with my hands. There we go. And start squishing it together, almost like kneading dough if I were going to make bread or something. But this will just help really mix everything good. And there's some oil in there, so that's nice to get that mixed in. So. Rub it against the bottom of the bowl to get all the rest of that in. Oh, this is good. And now I can actually take the bowl away and just use my hands to just keep almost like Play-Doh feeling. It's a nice, thick, but soft dough. Um, it's still something that's pretty wet and pretty soft. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my um, flour so keep a little bit of your flour still off to the side. Let me go get this so that you can um, take a little bit to put on top of it. Maybe even, I don't have very much in there, but I have a little bit. And if it's on the counter, it's okay, because if this squishes it up and grabs it, that'll be good. Oh, that's feeling a little bit better, a little bit drier. So it's still nice and soft, but it's not sticking to my fingers and things the same. So. I'm going to rub it all over the counter and get that extra dough up. And then I did. I took mine and separated into two pieces because there was plenty here. It doesn't seem like a lot, but um, there's plenty. So I like to roll it, and as I roll, sometimes I stretch my fingers apart, and that helps it to grow. Oh, there we go. Getting there long. And see how nice and smooth this is? Well, I made my first two snakes here at the library and then had to take it home to be baked. So when I was moving this one around, oh, it got all crinkly and crunched. I don't know if you can see the texture. It's not smooth. Um, it's got some dents and everything. When I tried to move it onto the pan, it kind of squished all together. So I took the other one and squeezed all the dough together and re-rolled it over so it's nice and smooth. So make sure that when you're making your snake, you have a pan nearby. Um, if you have parchment paper, it would be great to put it on, then it won't stick. Um, mine stuck to my pan this morning, but um, that was okay. That was, all right, so here's how I'm going to make this. So I got it off okay. 
So I have an old pan I brought in to just show you here. But so I, I squish this end together, it kind of makes it a little fatter, so I can turn that into the head. But this is still nice and skinny. Now I can just do that. Oh, I want a skinny tail. You could even do a bumpy tail. Maybe check out a book at the library or look online for some pictures of different snakes and see what you want to make it to look like. I just like a nice long skinny snake, but I like to have my, my head squishy round. So this one's kind of, and I think he's kind of got a pointy nose, so that's kind of the shape of my head. But then when I turn it sideways, it's really fat, so. And I don't know, I got a crack in there. Hmm. I'll re-squeeze it and see if I can move that around. All right, well, yeah, I'm not gonna be there. So anyways, I like my head to almost be diamond-shaped, almost pointy, like a triangle, rather, sorry. And then squish it down that way. Oh, maybe I could do one of those snakes. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, um, ooh. The ones that when they stand up and they hiss and they're spitting cobras, they have that fat part of their, their neck that flattens out. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, but now, if I wanted to bake this to make it stand up like he's a cobra standing up, I have to find something that can go in the oven. When I put him on the cookie sheet, that can go in the oven to hold this head up. Now for my other one, I took one of these cupcake holders. If you have a couple at home, maybe use two or so so they're firm. And I pushed one side in. And there we go for that. Um, it's not quite the right angle I'm looking for. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, a little bit better. There we go. So, and then I could cook this just like this so that his head will be staying up. Um, on your other one, decide what you want to do. Rattlers and cobras and uh, big, huge constrictors like um, anaconda. <laughs> or just do a weekly. So this one, I'm going to just show you some shapes you can do. So I'm not going to decide what kind of a head or tail I'm doing on this one. But, so you could do, uh, when you roll your snake out, you could just do like the letter S or the letter W. Can you see that W right there for Wendy? You could make a snake like that. You can make a snake that as he's squirreling around, his tail is over the other one. And make it, so when you cook it, he stays in the shape. See how this one, once I cooked it? It makes it stiff so you can paint it later, but he'll stay in that shape with the curl over him. Um, same thing that if this were a rattlesnake and you want to paint the end of his tail to look like it, you could take one of those cupcake holders or something that can go in the oven and just put it behind it to make sure that, that the tail is sticking up because they're rattlesnakes. Tail stick up and we go rattle, rattle, rattle. Um, so, or you can just do lots and lots and lots. And how about the snakes? Like they live up in the trees, um, pythons, and they just wrap themselves all within themselves in like that. And just put his head here. You could even just do a coiled snake that's all coiled up and sleeping. So see, maybe stick his tail out. Where's his little tail? stick his tail out <laughs> so you decide on what shapes you want to make um, it's just really fun I think this is a really soft pliable kind of dough it'll be easy to work with just don't add too much water at the very beginning okay um, and if you have a little extra dough um, flour rather that you can set aside that's great to put on your counter now I would suggest if you have a pan that you're putting in and if you have parchment paper um, or if we get some, we can put them in the kit. But to put that on, I would not spray, um, you know, cooking spray on this or put any kind of margarine or butter or, or Crisco. But um, in the morning, it will probably be stuck to the bottom of some pans and you just have to wiggle, wiggle to pick it up. You don't want to break it off. But um, I hope you have fun with it. 
I had fun. I actually had more fun than I thought I would. I really liked playing with this dough. Um, and you can make anything else with it later on now that you know how to make it. You can make any kind of animals or flowers and then you're going to cook it in your oven. So the directions that I read, now this is a tough one. This is why it's good to make it after school so that you can paint it the next day because the directions said to put it in your oven at 200 degrees and to cook it for three hours. Um, I tried to rush mine a little bit. It's still a little bit of soft in the middle. So I should have done the full three hours. So I would definitely suggest to do it the full three hours and then let it cool, take it off the pan and it'll be ready for the next day to paint. And you'll be getting a few of those paints in your um, kit. You'll definitely have green and black, probably blue and orange or pink and orange. We don't know. We've got a different collection, uh, selection, but definitely we'll have green and black in there. So have fun. Have a great day, everyone.